All right, we're uh, we're into validating incoming data, and we've kind of sort of done this with Serde when we were doing the mirroring of JSON. But I want to dive into a little bit more about the power of using serialize and deserialize with Serde for incoming JSON data to well validate the the data coming in. So uh, the plan here is, and let's create a brand new Thunder client request. Uh, let's imagine local host 3000. Let's imagine that we want to send in something to maybe like a validate validate uh, data. Try to like match the uh, the title of the stream a little bit. Uh, okay, so if I want to send a post to validate data in my body, I want to send JSON, and this is going to be a username and password. So if I have username you're going to be something like um, uh, Rick Zucker. Password. Uh, you're the super strong password of 1234, let's say. Uh, we want to make sure that we have both of these things, that they're both strings, and, well, that they, that they exist here. So right now, of course, if I send this, we get that 404 not found. So let's go ahead and set up our route to handle and take this in. And then we'll show you what happens if uh, we don't include one of these required form fields, but we're using uh, Serde to deserialize, which is going to provide us a little bit of uh, protection here. So in our data source routes, Add a new route. We're going to call this validate data. Let's uh, validate um, with survey. Mod. Uh, why can't you see that? Validate with Serde. Unresolved module, can't find file, validate with Serde.rs. Oh, because I completely forgot to put a .rs at the end of it. Okay, that should that should make that a little bit happier. All right, back to you. Let's uh let's create our let's create our function here. So if we have a well, we know we want the struct, but we want it to be essentially a new user. So we'll do a pub struct. Um, I like to call this like maybe like the request user. So request user, that will make it very different than maybe a response user, which probably wouldn't, you know, would, would include things like the, what the username is, maybe the ID after it gets put into the database, definitely not the password. We don't want to be passing that back afterwards. So that's why I would have these be two different things. Okay, so we have our quest user. We want this to have a um, username. Username, uh, you're gonna be a string, and we want a password, and you're gonna be a string. We also want to make sure that this uh, deserializes into, well, request user from the string, because what happens in a post request from a browser is that the JSON is stringified into, well, you know, a string with backslashes between each of the double, um, the double quotes uh, for like the keys and the values. Uh, because of that, when we get out on this side, we need to deserialize that from the string into the struct, uh, into the struct. So we want to derive uh, deserialize. But you notice that we're not actually getting it here, like there, there's nothing for us to see. So uh, we actually need to pull this in, don't we? Let's go ahead and open up a new terminal window and we'll do a cargo add uh, survey. And uh, we do need that dash F derive to bring in the derive um, macros for us. I'm gonna go ahead and add this. Once this is added in, we should be able to run this deserialize here. 
Now I could put serialize back in again, but I don't really plan to need to serialize this into JSON. Okay, so we have you. Uh, I want to, let's see, what's next? We want to create our, our route. So we have a pub uh, async function. Uh, this is going to be a validate with survey. Um, do we take anything in? Well, we're going to take in this request user. So we're going to have JSON use that. Uh, this is going to be our user. And your type is JSON request user. Um, are we going to return anything here? I don't know if we necessarily need to return anything. So I'm just going to sort of leave it blank. It'll be just a 200 OK. And that, that should be fine. OK, so um, what do I really want to do here? I don't really care about this whatsoever. We could like debug this out so I can, uh, I can implement debug here and then run just debug uh, user just to sort of see this uh, uh, see this import here. Okay, we need to import deserialize, import you. Uh, our no, okay, username and password are never read. Uh, that should, well, I guess because validate with survey is never being read. Let's go back to our mod. So we have you, we'll use validate with survey, validate with survey, and put you in here dot route I want this to be what did we call this this is validate data and you're going to be a post to validate with survey okay let's uh, let's run this again so I connection refused, but that might actually just be the recompiling wasn't finished yet. Okay, you're done now. Ooh, connections uh, refused by server. So let's see, uh, local host. I'm not getting any errors here. Uh, this is, this should still be to localhost 3000. Oh, it was just taking a little bit longer for uh, for it to start up. Uh, I guess I need to wait for it to actually say finished. Uh, but okay. We now see the debug printing out and we got these all in here. And we got a 200 okay. But what I really want to, to look into here is what if we said that uh, username was required and in a request, we didn't pass in a username. We only passed in a password. But if I hit send, we're going to get this 422 unprocessable, unprocessable entity, and it gives us an error message. Failed to deserialize the JSON body into the target type, missing field username. So now it does tell us like, okay, at line three, column one. That's that's that part is not the best for usernames. When we get to custom error messages, you might want to catch this and then um, uh, provide a better error, but that's out of scope for this specific lesson. Uh, what I want to show you here is that you can use survey to essentially enforce the shape of an object. Now, if we wanted it to be where username was optional and you can or cannot pass it in, then we could make username instead of a string, make it an option string. And at this point in time, when we hit send, to wait for it to, uh, to finish, oh, I think it's the connection to the database, uh, which I have not started. So that's why it's, uh, it's taking so long, because it's timing out. So we're waiting for that to finish running. There it goes. Uh, and now username is none here and we get back to the 200 okay. So it is perfectly valid to use CERDA to essentially perform a, a light um, validation of, of form fields for us. It gives us basic types. 
we get the power of the Rust types for us, and we get some basic uh, uh, error messages that actually tell us what's happening and what's going wrong in the case that it, you know, it fails. So anyways, that's what I wanted to show off here with uh, using survey to deserialize data for validation. Um, and in the next video, we'll talk about uh, validating using a custom JSON extractor. Uh, see you in that video. Bye.